Hello beloved, God is good that we are here again to share from his word. We thank the Lord for the opportunities that he gives us that we always come before him and that we always share concerning what he has purposed for us and that is his word. And so we pray together, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this moment that are giving us to share from your word we pray that, Lord, you bless us as we think about a name, a name that is good and what it does. We pray that, Lord, you enable us to live as a people that you want us to be in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I come with a simple message that has been packaged. And this simple message concerns a good name. It is something that is very common. Very many people have shared about it. You've heard about it. Maybe you might have shared about it somewhere. But let me just bring you this message that touches a good name because God purposes a good name for us. And so I just want to go straight into scripture because scripture is what we thrive on. Scripture modifies us. Scripture informs us. Scripture makes us aware of what God desires us to do. And in the scripture that I want to talk about is Proverbs chapter uh, 22. And uh, that chapter 22 of Proverbs is where we find that a good name, verse 1, a good name is to be more desired than the great wealth. So the writer says a good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver or gold. So the writer of the book of Proverbs informs us that a good name is better than wealth. A good name is better than riches. And someone can wonder how can a good name better than riches People go out to work to get money. People get out to work to gain riches. But this man in the book of Proverbs says a good name is better than riches. That is better than riches. And of course, writers say that the person who wrote this book of Proverbs is a wise man, the son of David, the third king of Israel, called uh, Solomon. And actually, history has it that Solomon was the greatest in terms of riches, in terms of wisdom, in terms of reputation. And so Solomon, if it is true that he's the one who wrote it, then he says a good name is better than riches. The same writer in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1, the Bible says a good name is better than a good ointment. Call it perfume. Call it a sweet-smelling ointment. And the day of one whose death is better than the day of one whose birth. And so he brings in that element as well. But the issue this time round is a good name is better than riches. A good name is better than sweet-smelling perfume. Why is it better? Why does this writer mention that a good name is better than riches? Why does he mention that it's better than sweet-smelling uh, perfume? You know, a good name speaks about one's integrity, speaks about one's reputation, and it speaks about the character that someone possesses. You may realize that actually someone can be rich, someone can have money, someone can have everything, children, and many, many other things, maybe positions in government or positions in the world. But this writer is emphasizing a good name that actually someone should possess. Now, why is a good name important? And so I come to mention about three or four things about a good name and implore us to strive, to struggle, to try our best to gain a good name. Number one, that a good name provides stability. So you, if you are trusted, 
that trust is a stabilizing factor in relationships. Relationships break because of lack of trust. And so, in a good name provides stability because it is trust itself. People will trust you. Your neighbors will trust you. Your children will trust you. If you are married, your wife will trust you or your husband will trust you. At workplace, if you exhibit this, it is stability. People will trust you. And so it's a very great ingredient in a good name. Those whose name is tarnished, it is difficult to build trust again. The moment you tarnish your name, the moment you play about with your name and it is soiled, building it back again is very, very difficult. And so the reason why I, my anger goes to people who want to soil other people's name, even when they have no reason to do it, but the only reason is to spoil. And so when you build up your name, the Bible is saying a good name is better than riches. Where there is no trust in relationships and friendships, they don't hold. And so, friends, point number one, a good name provides stability. And my prayer is to always endeavor to work for a name in your family, to work for a name at your workplace, to work for a name in the church, to work for a name everywhere. Because a name, like I've already said, is about integrity, is about reputation, it's about the character. And so my prayer this time is, I pray that God maintains a good name for me. And my prayer for you is that God maintains a good name for you. But also put in an effort that you work out a good name for yourself. Point number two is that a good name lives on. Meaning a good name is eternal. Remember, riches can fly away. That's why this writer is saying it's better than riches. That a good name is better than perfume because perfume, you smear it in the morning or a short time, it flees. It is fleeting. It is just for a moment. But a good name lives on. That's why it is said that a good name is eternal. Now, we have many men of integrity that have gone. Very many women of integrity that have gone, but their name lives on. Talk about Biblical figures that we talk about now. Talk about men like Abraham. Talk about women like Sarah. Talk about men like Jacob, Esau. I mean, those, everyone there. They were actually maintained their name, and we talk about them now. Israel, talk about them now. Moses, talk about them now. Joshua, and there are things that are known about them. Now, like for Joshua, of course, there are statements that he made, but one of them, he says, I and my family, we will serve the Lord. Now, something like that actually has lived on and I thrive on it very, very much as a father and as a husband in my house. And so I and my family shall serve the Lord. And there are very many other women, men and women. Currently, in our recent past, men like Nelson Mandela, men like Julius Nyerere, they have perished, they have gone, but their name lives on. So friends, we are here to live and to make a name so that actually, even when we are gone, they will mention something, something good about us. Now, the issue is, what are you known for? What will people know you for? What good? Of course, there are some people who make a name by the bad that they do, the evil that they do, the wickedness that they do, you know, the wrong things that they carry on. Of course, their name also lives on. But that's not, not, that is not what the Bible's meaning is talking about here. The Bible is talking about a good name that you must live on. And so that after you are gone, people will remember with pleasure. Not to remember you with agony. Not to remember you with fear. And so strive, my brother, strive, my sister, to make a name because it lives on. You know, um, it lives on. Our Lord Jesus Christ is still remembered up to now because of the good that he did because of the good. And that's why we call it good news. He brought salvation. He brought, I mean, the healing, the raisings of, from the dead, the exorcisms. Exorcisms means 
that Jesus healed those that were demon possessed, raising the dead and doing good. So I implore you, my brother, my sister, to do good, to be remembered for the good that is. And so your character will influence those that are around you. Your character will influence your children. Your character will influence your worker mates. Your character will influence people in your church where you pray. They will say he's a good man. They will say he's a good woman. They will say he's a nice young man because of the good that you do. So that people don't remember you for the wrongs that you have done, for the wickedness that you have exhibited, and so that they will remember you for the good that you have done, that will promote life, things that will promote well-being. is something that I'm talking about here, my brothers and sisters. Something that will promote peace. There's something that will promote calmness in people's lives so that you deal away with anxiety, with the stress, with the disappointment, with the worry. There are some people who, when they pass around, you fear. When they walk around, you will get worried. You will become anxious because of the character that they exhibit. So my brothers and sisters, the issue in point number two, a good name is a tunnel, a name that lives on. And so I'm praying to God to help me. And I pray for you that God enables you to have a name that lives on and that brings about stability. And number three, a good name brings favor, loving favor, and definitely people will love you. You for the kindness, for the good that you do. Therefore, people will stay by your side. And that's a nice thing. I enjoy having people around me. People, you know, feeling good about what I do. It's a nice thing. When people congratulate you for what you have done, isn't it my brother? Isn't it my sister? When you get congratulated for the good that you have done. And so my desire and your desire should be to live a life that will be, you know, will be like salt. And so Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5 that you are salt of the earth. The reason why he mentions that you are the light of the world. So that actually you will give the light, you will make it nice, you'll make it, you know, sweet, and life should continue on. So friends, this day, this moment, I ask God to enable us to try in our generation to have this favor of God falling upon us, that a good name brings loving favor, that people will, I mean, some, something that will keep the fellowship going. Because as many, many times our fellowships, even in churches, disintegrate because of the things that we do and say. And so why should we lead, up, lead to disintegration? Why should we lead, lead to division? Why should we lead to, you know, things that don't please God? Paul condemns division in the church at Corinth because people had gone, you know, after personalities and things like that. Why must we? So we need to keep together. And so as I wind up, my brothers and sisters, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, Paul mentions something that, um, that energized me, that when you're a church leader, be it a pastor or a bishop or whoever, he says actually you must have a good testimony among those who are outside. It touched me very, very heavily. A good testimony... Um, among those who are outside. Let people talk good about you because of the good that you do, because of the nice words that you speak. So my friends, a good name is better than riches. So King David also said something and all the people uh, took notes of it uh, and it pleased them as everything that David did was pleasing. Friends, let's work out something. In our generation, at our time, be you a year father, a year mother, a year brother, a year sister, are you a child? Are you whoever? Are you an employee? Are you who? Are you a leader? A good name is better than riches. A good name is better than sweet smelling perfume because okay, all these go away, but your name will remain. Your name will stand. Your name will testify. And may God bless you as he blesses me as well that we shall live as people of testimony to those that are outside speaking good about us because of the good that we do and that um, we live on to bring glory to the name of God, because we are doing his work while we are still here. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And we all say, Amen. <music>